Hi, I'm Winter, and say, have you ever been playing a game on your Wii when you suddenly have this intrusive thought? Damn it, this game is way too playable. Well, Lord knows I have. I cannot stand just how good this garbage is. Luckily, there is a solution to this problem. May I introduce the Nintendo 3DS? I love the 3DS. It's definitely one of my top 10 favorite consoles of all time. It has so many great games, two whole Pokemon generations, Kirby Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot, an original 3D Mario platformer, a return to two-dimensional Zelda, Kid Icarus Uprising, and of course, who could forget, a whole bunch of tumors. Yeah, see, the 3DS came out at what I would consider both a fortunate and an unfortunate time. The Wii U might have existed, but whatever Nintendo was doing, they were f***ing it up. But the 3DS, I mean, this thing was close to the GameCube in terms of power, and the GameCube was comparable to the Wii. So Nintendo, in all their infinite wisdom, could port all those old games up to the 3DS for some extra cash. And I do not hesitate at all when I say the 3DS had way more ports than any console needs. Like, I get it with porting Wii U games to the Switch, because, you know, the Wii U doesn't even exist, but was anybody really dying to have Ocarina of Time on the 3DS? Don't get me wrong, Ocarina of Time 3D is actually one of the coolest ports I'm talking about here today, and I'd honestly even consider it more of a remaster or remake than a port. This is without a doubt the definitive version of Ocarina of Time. Hell, I would never even consider playing the Nintendo 64 version over this. And this was also such a great way to grow interest in the 3DS, especially since Nintendo did the same thing with Mario 64 for the original DS. But seriously, this game and Star Fox 64 3D were meant to be selling points for the 3DS when, realistically, they just didn't change enough to warrant being here. Let's look at what Mario 64 DS added back in 2005, for example. 30 extra stars adding an entire extra fifth onto the game, and 3 extra playable characters as well as a bunch of fun little mini-games in a multiplayer battle mode. What did Ocarina of Time 3D add that wasn't in a previous release of the game? Once again, I cannot stress enough that Ocarina of Time 3D is the definitive version of the game. But they really didn't add much of anything here. You can use the touchscreen to assign your items to the face buttons as well as having two extra buttons for more items, and the iron boots were updated to be an item instead of equipment which makes the water temple significantly more bearable. Other than that, there's really nothing. Everything else here was included in a previous port of Ocarina of Time, including Master Quest, which was originally released as a second disc alongside the GameCube re-release of the game. I still love Ocarina of Time 3D, but to be completely honest, outside of making the game significantly less annoying, it doesn't really feel like it needed this. Especially since at this point, it had already been re-released on every Nintendo home console since the Nintendo 64. At least the later remake of Majora's Mask changed more than what Ocarina of Time 3D bothered to for better or for worse. Whew, all this Nintendo talk is tiring me out. Let's see what we're gonna talk about for the next 30 seconds to a minute to cool down. No, no, I'm not ready for more Sonic yet, wait! Nintendo weren't the only ones guilty of trying to put all their shit on the 3DS though. Sega released a 3DS version of Sonic Generations and Sonic Lost World, and to be completely honest, this is my preferred version of Lost World just from what I played in the demo alone. Now the 3DS version of Generations, that's just okay, but Lost World just genuinely feels better over on 3DS. Where on the Wii U, it felt like a jarring departure from the boost formula that Sonic had been using on home consoles since 2007. On the 3DS, this just feels like a neat Sonic game that evolves handheld Sonic games from just being another sequel to Sonic Rush. I feel like that doesn't really make sense, but that's just genuinely how it feels to me. But anyways, that's enough Sonic. Back to Nintendo's bullsh**. 2015, Nintendo revealed the newest member of the 3DS family, the new Nintendo 3DS. Yes, that's its legal name. <laughs> and I thought my birth name was embarrassing. The new Nintendo 3DS contained loads of features that set it apart from its older brother, including more powerful hardware and the ability to scan amiibo without needing any external peripherals. And Nintendo needed a selling point for this thing. Badly. Xenoblade? Xenoblade. Xenoblade! Nintendo announced that Xenoblade Chronicles would somehow be coming from the Nintendo Wii over to the 3DS, exclusively for the new line of handhelds. And when the game finally launched alongside the new hardware... Xenoblade. Yeah, it was just a downgraded version of the Wii version of the game. Now, I wasn't expecting something on the level of Xenoblade Definitive Edition here. Hell, I wasn't even expecting this to be as good as the Wii version in any way, but this just feels wrong. The 3DS just doesn't have the screen real estate for a game like Xenoblade. You have to stay focused on all nine of your arts, your party's health, the enemy's health, the relative position of yourself and the enemies, and any potential buffs or debuffs to you or your enemies. And with a screen the size of the 3DS's, that's just 
not really manageable. Now, to be completely fair, this was actually the way I experienced Xenoblade 1 for the first time. Please don't take my Xenoblade license, I swear I've grown up! But is there any reason at all to go back to this version now that Definitive Edition is out on Switch? Absolutely not! Seriously, if you're going to play Xenoblade 1, just sink the $60 into Definitive Edition, or hell, even just sink $20 into the Wii U Virtual Console version if you really want to play the old version. It's literally a better version of the game for cheaper. But you know what else Nintendo did in 2015? Release the Wii U's killer app on 9-11. Yikes. Yeah, Super Mario Maker. Who could forget it? I know I'll never forget, because Nintendo decided to port this to 3DS too. Super Mario Maker for Nintendo 3DS. Yep, that's the title. This is Jonathan Generickson for The God's Green Earth. This one is weird. So the course creator works super well with the 3DS. It feels really natural to place items and enemies using the touchscreen on the 3DS, more so I'd argue than on the Wii U gamepad. And it certainly feels better than using the touchscreen or button controls in Mario Maker 2. Everything you could use to create your levels in the original Wii U version is here, although you do still have to wait a few hours to unlock everything. But by far the weirdest part of this game is the lack of an ability to upload your courses to the internet for others to play. No, in the 3DS version, you can only send your courses through Street Pass. These courses are what I like to call STDs, Street Pass Transmitted Designs. See, the way Street Pass works is that you close your 3DS and then while it's in sleep mode, if it passes another system that's in sleep mode, they send information to each other, such as the system owner's me and their most recently played game. And for Mario Maker, it also transmitted courses. This is so stupid. I don't really know how well this version of Mario Maker sold, but as someone who played this version of Mario Maker long before I ever got a Wii U, I know for a fact that I never once received anything through Street Pass and rest assured that I was an avid user of Street Pass. But you want to know the stupidest part of all? You can still play courses that were made in the Wii U version from the course world. You can't search for specific levels by code or anything, but you can play them. Which begs the question, why the hell can't you upload them? Everything about this port is just so bewildering. Speaking of bewildering ports of Wii U games, here's Hyrule Warriors. This is by far the most worthless port on the system. Even more so than Mario Maker. It became outdated only a few years after its release due to the definitive version of the game releasing on Switch with all the content for both the Wii U and 3DS versions included. The game also barely runs on the original 3DS. This is definitely more of a new Nintendo 3DS kind of game. At the end of the 3DS's life, Nintendo just kind of gave up and started spitting out whatever they could onto the thing. Ports Yoshi's Woolly World and Kirby's Epic Yarn. Sure. So Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World really isn't that different from the Wii U version. The main thing they added is a bunch of short videos involving Poochie and some extra levels featuring Poochie, as well as the ability to design your own Yarn Yoshi, which I gotta admit is pretty neat. But what did Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn introduce? Mortality! Yeah, they added the ability to die in this version of the game through the new devilish mode difficulty. This adds a health meter as well as this little devil thing that chases you through the levels, and I gotta say... This game was really not designed with Kirby being able to die in mind. As most games should not be, I'd argue. Devilish mode is actually genuinely pretty hard just because of how much more used to being able to go at your own pace you'll be if you've experienced the normal mode or the Wii version. And as far as I know, this is the main thing they added, just a more challenging difficulty. For $40. You can buy this for cheaper on the Wii U eShop. But we're not done with the garbage Nintendo pushed onto the 3DS at the end of its life just yet. Nope, they also released a port of Captain Toad. That's all I have to say about that. But then they went and released a port of the original Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube, and I've gotta be honest here, from what I played, this was... fine? I mean, it's inoffensive for the most part. It adds multiplayer using Guiji, which doesn't really work super well if you're not playing on the new 3DS, but still, I guess it's a cool addition. They also added the strobe bulb from Dark Moon, which, while I didn't use it, is a pretty neat touch. Luigi's Mansion's 3DS version was developed by Grezzo, the same team that did Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, and I don't know, I just don't think they put as much love into it this time. In some places, this actively looks worse than the GameCube, and I feel like changing Luigi and Toad's art styles to be more in line with modern Mario games honestly removes a lot of the charm that the original GameCube version had. There are some cool touches, like the Game Boy Horror being displayed on the bottom screen now, or the gallery being much more organized, but overall, this one is just kind of uninspired. I feel like these 3DS ports were really just an excuse for Nintendo to try and sell some copies of these games that didn't really get a chance to shine, and while I can sort of see that with Xenoblade Chronicles and Kirby's Epic Yarn, 
Some of these just don't make sense. But there's one 3DS port that manages to outweird all of this garbage. A port so dastardly, so illogical, so unexplainable, that even the most hardcore gamer can't bear to look at it. Brace yourself. How did this happen? Or to put it more accurately, why did this happen? Who was just begging to play Minecraft on their 3DS? This just looks awful. The render distance goes maybe three chunks, even less in some portions. The controls are weird with the new 3DS's C-Stick being required for this game and the L and R buttons doing the opposite of what they would normally do on any other console version of Minecraft. You drop items by pressing B? Why? Nothing about this port makes any sense. Why would you make this? To be completely fair to the game, it's still playable. Hell, there's even been a speedrun done of it. This version is no longer officially supported by Mojang, but for a good while there, they kept updating it at the same pace as they would any other version of the game. It's just such a weird anomaly that, while obvious, still should not exist. I'm going to start a Minecraft 3DS SMP. No, you're not. There's only local multiplayer and only for two people. Why would you bother including local multiplayer? What kid is going to host a sleepover to play the 3DS version of Minecraft? Hey, yeah, I was just wondering if you'd want to come over, spend the night, play some Minecraft Nintendo 3DS edition together, and I, uh... Wendy's hung up. I'm sorry if I seem overly upset about Minecraft with the Nintendo 3DS. It's a more common problem than you think. It's just, this is one of the prime examples of the issue with all these 3DS ports. A ton of them come from asking, could we, instead of should we, and as a result, you end up with garbage like this. Well, that was great. And you know what? Talking about all these games with For the Nintendo 3DS in the title has really inspired me to finally go out and get that legal name change I have been looking forward to. Alright everybody, you may now officially refer to me as Winter Wright for the Nintendo 3DS. I'm sure this won't get confusing for anyone.